name is Ryan Postel, and I'm a web developer. Have you ever gone to a website? Everything that's on there, I make that. I, I, I write the code to display that website so that you can see it and interact with it. As a developer, I use uh, the Visual Studio Code Editor so that I can write my code uh, and see it live in the server. And then most of my work is just in HTML and CSS. Uh, the HTML is the uh, skeleton, the structure of the website where you have your, your text, your images, your, your lists, and your tables. And then the CSS is how you style it, how you make it look, and how you rearrange it on the page. And that's where a lot of the real work comes in. Yeah, we, so we work on our own from home, but I'm part of a larger team that we have meetings every Wednesday so that we can just reconvene and, and see each other. But there's, there's other developers. We have what's called the producers who work between the developers and the client to get what they want made. Uh, and then we also have the content people, the SEO people. But uh, I'm, I'm just the builder and uh, everybody else on the, uh, on the peripherals of a website do all the back end, everything else that you don't see on a website, they handle that. I just make the front end, which is what you see. My tech journey started uh, while I was doing Uber in Seattle. Uh, I was doing Uber for eight years as a stay-at-home dad so that I could do that on the weekends. And I was picking up all these tech people from Seattle, like Amazon developers, de uh, senior developers at Microsoft. And they were talking to me and telling me how they used to be like an English teacher, but then they taught themselves. And now they had the department of AI at Microsoft. And that's what really made it attainable. Like these, these people that have no tech backgrounds, they're not mathematical or physics geniuses, but they can do this. So it started to make me think that, okay, maybe, maybe I can do this because they work from home. I want to do that. I don't want to leave home and, and go do this. I want to be home with my kids and, and, and be there for them. So that's, that's kind of what started this, this whole journey. And I asked them how they learned and what they used. And they, they told me all these different courses and methods and uh, through those interactions with those passengers, that is what got me started on, on web development. I, I, uh, I played City Skylines, a game, and it's a city builder, and I played on my wife's laptop, and I would post pictures of my city on, on the Reddit, subreddit for it, and when she deployed, she was going to take my, that laptop with her, and I made a post that, I said, sorry guys, my wife's deploying, I can't play anymore, and then someone messaged me, and they said, I want to help you, and he sent me a link to an Amazon listing for an $1,800 gaming laptop. A week later, I got that laptop in the mail, and instead of using it for gaming, I finally had like the, the, the beefy enough PC to learn development. Like I, I had, I had the RAM, I had the, the power, and I can actually do something. That completely changed my life because that's what I did. I built a freelance business uh, off of that laptop. So he, he, he gave me a free laptop that is now generating income for me and my family. And uh, in, in the last five years now, it's generated you know, six figures a year just from that gift. I learned how to code by myself. Uh, I didn't have enough money for school and I didn't have the time because I was a stay-at-home dad, so I, I just can't leave to go to class and I can't take kids with me. Uh, so I used uh, Udemy and I downloaded the uh, Zero to Mastery course from Andre Niyogi and I only completed the HTML and CSS portion of it because that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to make websites for small businesses and after I did that, I just spent months after months just building websites and running into problems and solving them because you can watch these videos all day and, and just copy what they're doing. But once you're actually doing it and you're running into problems, you need to figure out how to solve these because they don't teach you that in the videos. And you get that by doing it in person. So I spent countless months just rebuilding websites over and over again until it just stuck. Uh, and that journey into web development started with me thinking I can get a job. Okay, maybe I'll get a job somewhere I can work from home, but I slowly realized that the more complicated parts of web development, like the, the JavaScript, the React, all the frameworks that go with that, did not make sense to me. Only the styling, like the make, making things look pretty, that's what I was good at. And I didn't think I'd get a job just only knowing how to do that. So that's what made me have to go into business for myself. And I thought, okay, 
I'm going to make these websites for small businesses. I'm going to make them something beautiful, something they'd never be able to have before with just regular templates or WordPress or, or cheap dev work. I'm going, to, I'm going to make them something nice. I, I started making my first sales calls and failed miserably. But then I learned through talking to them what they don't like about their free and cheap and easy websites. And then I started to learn how to cater my work to fix those pain points. Like whatever problems they had with uh, their page builder site or the WordPress site, I could fix because I can code. I, I can do anything I want. I feel like I'm, I'm the wizard that I feel the electricity coming from my fingers. I can just snap it and do whatever you want. And that's how I sold it. I, I identified their problems and I said, look, I do something differently and here's what I'm gonna do for you and this is why it's gonna work. And that approach is what got me my first clients. And as I built my messaging and I learned more and more problems that they had, I just learned how to solve more of their problems. And that was really it. A lot of developers, they, they don't like think about things like a business person. They see it as a developer at face value. I looked at it as they have problems that need solving. A lot of it was just trial and error and just trying to figure out what is the right thing to do. And you eventually figure that out on your own by failing a lot and making a lot of mistakes. I, one of my largest clients is, is the largest construction supply manufacturer in the Pacific Northwest. And I accidentally took down their entire email system because I didn't know what uh, email records were. Uh, when I changed over their website, their entire sales team and the entire department's mail went down. And I got a, I got a call from the CEO and they said, hey, what's going on? And I said, I'm on it. <laughs> and uh, then I, I got with their IT guys and I learned, oh, okay, you're not supposed to do this unless you move over the email records before you change the website. So they don't teach you those things. And it's just, again, it's the trial and error, but hopefully when you're learning, you don't do it with a multi-million dollar company breathing down your neck. Once my freelance business started to become successful, uh, I, I thought, okay, this is it. This is what I'm gonna do. But I, I didn't realize that, no, there's there still more for me to do. And that's when uh, my business Code Stitch came into play. I developed a number of relationships online by posting my work on the, on the subreddits, on communities, and people started to see the quality of work that I did. And they reached out to me wanting to work with me. And one of those people was uh, my partner, Matt. He wanted someone like me to build the front ends of his sites. So I worked with him for a couple of years before I, I was talking to him one day when we finished a project. And I said, hey, wouldn't it be nice if I just had a library that I could just browse all of my designs and click a button to just copy and paste the code into my site? And then that's it. And I could just build a site like that. And then he stopped and he's like, how much do you need? And he was, he was serious. I thought, yeah, hey, you're kidding me. But no, he's like, I, he's like, I will use this today. So that phone call is literally how it started. And now we, we launched in uh, about three months ago. I mean, we have over a thousand users now and growing. And I, I can't believe how fast that happened. But all, all I'm making is HTML and CSS templates for developers to use to make their websites. And all of these templates are built on the culmination of my uh, learning of H just HTML and CSS, where most developers maybe spend a couple weeks or a month on HTML and CSS to get onto the more important stuff. I spent five years only working in HTML and CSS to be able to make incredibly lean, easy to understand and organized clean code that is worthy to be sold. And now we have Code Stitch. If I could go back in time to talk to myself in that Uber while studying, uh, you know, most people would say, Ryan, do web development, do this, do that. But it, it would, I feel like it would disrupt the timeline. I have to make the mistakes that I make to get to where I am today. Cause that's, that's what mistakes are. They're not failures. They're just opportunities that you're not looking at the right way. So everywhere that I failed, you know, I've learned something and it, it takes me in another direction. Maybe the where you were going at first isn't where you're supposed to be going and then it just knocks you in a different direction. That's where you're supposed to be going. You just have to be open to the opportunities that present themselves to you and, and not to be afraid to put yourself out there and take them. So I wouldn't say anything to my past self. I'd say, you know what? Whatever you're doing now is what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> just, just keep failing until you succeed.